This misconception has been around since I started my fitness journey. All my female clients and all my female friends, they have this real big fear. If they start lifting weights, they will get big and they will look like a man. I spent around 50 hours researching this topic and unsurprisingly, there aren't really many studies on female training, let alone the female body. However, recently, there have been some interesting studies and data shedding some light on this. But I thought instead of just showing you the data and the studies, I would also interview someone from the same gender. In this video, I will be interviewing my girlfriend. She has been lifting weights for four years now, and she doesn't really want to be a bodybuilder or compete in anything. She's mainly doing this for her health and to get stronger. She will share with you her experiences and answer the most important question, if she turned into a man or not yet. There, there are so many expectations, like you have to look a certain way. And, oh, I don't want to lift weights. I'm scared to become too bulky or like I will look like a man. As females, you're told like, yeah, to train your booty and, and you go to your class to make your booty look nice and all this bullshit. Women should do whatever the fuck they want, first of all. Welcome Hello. To, the, to this uh, mini podcast episode. Thanks for uh, having me. Why don't you just tell our audience what do you do, uh, what is your background since when you started lifting? Just a small intro, so people can get to know you better. Yeah, so I started weightlifting, I think four or three years ago. It was actually during the pandemic, so I would say it's actually, it's been three years now. I mean, I've always been into sports of different kinds. Uh, I always like to move. I've been into running a lot and during my studies I even uh, ran a half marathon and stuff like this. So I've always been quite active and also very important. I started doing karate when I was 13 years old and I've been doing this ever since and it has always been part of my journey and I love it. So wh why don't you just begin from your running times? How did running uh, impact your physically and mentally? Yeah, so actually running was really important for me because it was a way to relax, to get out of my mind. And also, for example, when I was living in different towns or even when I was traveling, I used to love to go for a run to explore the city or my surrounding a bit. But if I compare myself uh, now uh, to back how I was back then, I would say it's a huge difference. Even though like I used to do karate like three times a week and also going for runs. So I was really active, like I did a lot of cardio mostly. I mean, of course, martial arts also include some, some weight training, some body weight training mostly. And I think I would say I was, I always used to be quite strong. But now since I've been lifting weights for three years now, I feel physically so different. I gained some muscles, of course. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, and my body composition has changed a lot, which at the same time, I want to stress this, like this is actually not the main reason why I started lifting weights. There was a time when I was always a bit, un bit anti-gym and I used to make fun of like all the gym bros and I thought oh, it's actually boring, like why would you go to the gym and just like torture yourself, why would you do this to yourself? I was more yeah into martial arts, I mean I still am because I think like there's a whole philosophy behind this and uh, it's very uh, diverse and like there's so many aspects of the sports and this is what I always found very very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but but then did you have also the this common misconception that if you start lifting weights, you will look like a man? Yeah, maybe a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very common belief. So That's what true. what do you think of this um, misconception in society? Yeah, it's actually a bit funny because like once you start lifting we weights yourself you realize how difficult it is to gain weight, uh, to gain muscles. And then it's a bit funny to me when girls be like, oh, I don't want to lift weights. I'm scared to become too bulky or like I will look like a man. And then I'm like, I mean, right now I would be like, well, I wish because it's really hard to actually gain muscles and to change your physique or like to look strong or that you look like you actually go to the gym you know uh, so it takes a lot of effort a lot of time mm -hmm. and i mean that's what i wanted to stress on like this society's view on this is kind of uh, very skewed uh, especially now with instagram and social media and stuff all the people you see there most of them they take drugs 
So it's super easy to say like, oh, if I lift weights, I will start looking like this, but it's actually not. You need to work like this for 10 years and then take drugs and then maybe you'll look like this. So it's kind of misleading so much right now. Yeah, and of course, like there's this, uh, this aspect, but actually for me, it's very important to stress that what was actually a game changer for me <laughs> was also like this change in mindset that my main focus or my main goal was to be strong. Yeah, yeah. So once you start focusing on that, it completely, or at least for me, it changed completely my mindset and my motivation. Because it's like usually, you know, women, they, there are so many expectations, like you have to look a certain way and you go to your class to make your booty look nice and all this bullshit. And of course, I think you also have to be honest, like, of course, one motivation to work out is like that you feel comfortable in your body and that you feel you feel good, you feel nice. And this can be in different shapes, like there's not one way. This I find it also important to, to stress. But if you if I go to the gym and be like, oh, I want to be strong, like I want to I want to feel strong and it's nice to be able to lift heavy and not only in the gym but also in your daily life, you would feel a difference, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, and it's it's very important, like while researching for this video, I came across many, many studies showing that women, especially women, they need to start lifting early. The best time is to start very early, like early 20s, even teens. Uh, but the next best time is now. Uh, so don't don't feel like the time has passed because of, of bone density issues uh, when you grow up, especially for women, the bone density as you grow up decreases. So it's very important for women to start lifting early to, to compensate this a bit. And as you said, like mentally, you feel much better. You feel comfortable, you feel strong. Like it changes your like view on things, right? Yeah, definitely. And this is a very important second aspect, I would say. It's like I also do it for my mental health. It's for me to to relax or after work if I want to, yeah, free my mind <laughs> of all the stress. It's also stress relief, of course, um, because when you're lifting heavy, you you don't have time or you can't think about something else. Um, you have to really focus on your body and also to connect with your body this is also nice like if you feel yourself and you you feel different parts and yeah different muscles <laughs> you actually start to feel some muscles you've never felt before yeah, or you didn't sure. know they existed actually that's also an interesting experience i think also seeing you at the past three years i feel like your relationship with food changed a lot like you used to not eat as much now you're eating a lot you're eating as much as me now. So what do you think of this? What, how, how did this happen? Yeah, I mean, I could definitely um, feel a difference. I think it has to do with when you gain or when you have more muscles, you also burn more. And also your approach to food changes a bit, from my experience at least. You feel like, oh, I want to eat. I mean, I've always been a good eater and I love food and it's important for me to eat properly. But now it's also when you're... Um, working out a lot you're also like okay food is my fuel actually so I need to eat I need to eat carbs of course also you need to, to you need to eat enough protein that's beneficial for your for your gains of course but it's also this misconception that um, yeah I only eat salad and chicken and um, that's how I get fit so it's actually you understand no I need I need yeah. a decent amount of calories and I mean, carbs. I you see this on in Instagram the whole time, right? Like girls showing their 1000 calories diets and stuff. Um, yeah. It, it just bullshit and it doesn't, it's not healthy to, to live like this. And you tried this before, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think as, as a girl or a woman, um, you always, like you grow up uh, like being exposed to this diet culture and uh, for sure, like when I was a teenager, there were some times when I tried to do a diet or whatever, but I was not really knowledgeable about diets or food mm -hmm. even. You would just like try some stuff you've seen on the internet or you've heard yeah. about or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I never had like any issue with an eating disorder or anything like this, because actually when I was a teenager, I remember this was a huge issue in my environment. Yeah. Like I knew yeah. so many girls who had eating disorders also. So I think that's also very yeah dangerous par part 
and I think also in the fitness industry or culture, you need to be careful with um, not overdoing also it. Also, this yeah, this risk. And honestly, I mean, I never tracked my calories, so I didn't no. really know how much I was eating. But you're the expert. Uh, I mean, also living with a bodybuilder <laughs> has <that>. changed my <laughs> perspective. But I also I've learned a lot. Um, yeah, now I'm eating way more. I mean, I'm still not tracking my calories actually. But you I, track it when you start losing weight, right? Yeah. So sometimes, um, like so far, I did two cuts actually, mm -hmm. and then I, I tracked my calories because it's no. really more way more efficient, and it really helped me a lot to still eat a lot of food and still mm -hmm. eat the food I like. But yeah, you have to be in a deficit, so that's no. why I tracked my calories. And this actually gave me a very good overview of how much food I can eat or how much food I actually eat when I just eat intuitively. No. Mm -hmm. And now I mostly do intuitive eating, actually. What I, th I think also one important thing, and quite a bad misconception, because we also don't have many studies on this, is that women uh, need to train differently than men. Uh, also, researching this video, I didn't find any uh, solid evidence that we need. you need to do that. But there is a, 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 a new meta-analysis in 2024, just released, actually, showing no difference at all. And uh, for the past three years, you have been training almost the same volume as me uh, there's no big difference so do you feel like your body's destroyed or you feel like because you're a female you uh, you're training too much or something no not at all actually i mean there has al also been progress for example i started doing a full body workout and working out like three days a week on average yeah and i mean it helped me a lot that you gave me like this plan and like you showed me different exercises and um so i had like some orientation <laughs> what yeah. to do i think that was very helpful in the beginning especially but then when you get more into it yeah. uh, for example at some point i think like it's been two years now I've been, I'm, I'm working out four days a week on average. I'm doing like two upper body sessions and two lower body sessions. And yeah, as I said, for example, usually as females, you're told like, yeah, to train your booty and, no. you know, to focus on your booty. Only train and your, your lower body. And your, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or like to have a flat uh, stomach, a uh, flat belly. At some point, like when you get more into it, in, into, yeah, lifting weights, you, you want to be stronger. But also at some point you're a bit like, oh, okay, I also want to grow my arms yeah. and I want to have some biceps and I want to have a strong back, you know? And this is not only for like how you look, but it's also because you want to feel strong. And you know, when people my age, they tell me like, oh, I have back pain and stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> maybe there's a problem here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, you actually discover that you have back muscles, you know? Yeah. And as I said, like, I mean, it's not that I've never been working out before. I was always quite sporty, I would say. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like you need weights to grow muscles. There's no way to grow muscles except weights. Yeah. Uh, yes, body weight training will increase mm -hmm. muscles, but it's not the same as lifting weights because you need stimulus. As I've said in this channel many, many times, you, know, you need sleep, food, uh, and progressively increasing the weights every week to build muscles. Other than that, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely confirm that. But it's not a contradiction, right? So for me, it's not only lifting weights. So I still do my martial arts. I still love it. I still love trying new exercises or new mm. kinds of sports. It's not a contradiction like you. Mm. I mean, I don't want to be a professional bodybuilder or anything, so I'm mostly doing it to feel good and strong. No. So this also leaves you room to try new stuff. I think that's also the problem with many people. They don't like the gym, which I understand. The gym has a, has a place and the people there are a bit... It needs getting used to. You can consider it as medicine, you know, like you just go there, do the thing, and then other days you can enjoy whatever you want to enjoy but it's kind of needed right now like back then when we had less research on resistance training it was more uh, only do cardio and you'll be fine but now it's more do cardio and do it lifting but yeah so but that's really interesting because you're doing a karate you're doing weightlifting and also walking a lot and doing your cardio and biking yeah so so how do you manage your time like how do you fit all of this in one week I, because you still work 
like a full-time job, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a full-time uh, job on average, like maybe 50 hours per week. Yeah, because I get this a lot, right? Like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to work out. So please enlighten yeah. us. Yeah, I mean, there's no uh, magic trick or anything. So mm -hmm. you still have to go at the end of the day. Yeah. And for sure, I have some days when I come back from work and I'm just tired and I just want to sit on the couch and eat some stuff, <laughs> <laughs> some chocolate. Uh, mm -hmm. For sure, there are those days and it does need discipline for sure yep. and motivation. But also, I think there are a lot of things or a lot of hacks, if you want, um, mm -hmm. that help you a lot to have a plan like mm -hmm. an exercise plan uh, and I, I write down all of my sessions and my progress mm -hmm. and this like motivates me a lot because you also see your progress yeah. and also this gives me some structure okay I know uh, mm -hmm. what to do on which day I think some people it would help them a lot to also go with friends like yeah. to have a common commitment mm -hmm. for me it's a bit different <laughs> I mean I love my friends <laughs> and I'm not antisocial or anything but for me, the gym is really something I'm, I, I do it for myself mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because especially at work, I have to interact with a lot of people and um, I have to socialize the whole day. So I actually enjoy going to the gym by myself mostly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe for some people, it's nice if you go together with your friends. And yeah, sometimes we go together. This also uh, is nice, of course. But yeah, you just have to just do it. That, that's the, the that's the problem. It has to be done, right? It has to be done at the end of the day, yeah. No. But yeah, you can... You can make it as frictionless as you can. So, yeah, that? for sure, yeah. And also, yeah, to make it a habit. I think that's also very important. Do you remember how long it took you to make it a habit? Yeah, not sure. I mean, I think probably a couple of months. No. Yeah, maybe six months. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, when you're a complete newbie, I mean, mm -hmm. I would say maybe now I'm an intermediate and in the beginning, of course, it's a bit hard because like you still don't know all the exercises and you're struggling a bit or you're mm -hmm. in intimidated also. Um, and after a while, it gets easier, of course. Yeah. And also it's motivating because you see some progress and yeah, for sure. this I mean, for sure helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you have your sheet, uh, you have been tracking since since you started. You can see all the progress. It's always going up. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite motivating to see this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, some stuff, it's also a bit frustrating sometimes yeah. because it takes a lot of time. And mm -hmm. in some stuff, uh, you're, you're stagnating at some point and then yeah, I mean, you have I, to push yourself. I mean, I know what you what you mean. It's, it's quite interesting because in, in this 2024 minute analysis, women in your biceps and your shoulder, the muscle fibers there are uh, of the slow twitch type which is harder to grow and unlike men we have the fast twitch fibers in our shoulders and biceps so it's easier for us to build these muscles uh, so i understand so it's quite frustrating to grow your biceps and, and shoulders but so. there has been progress and this <laughs> at the same time then is really motivating for sure so also i understand as a woman you have your menstrual cycle so how do you train around this you have a you have a way of working around this how do you do this? This was really something I had to discover myself and it took me um, some time to first have the awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to educate myself about this because I didn't know much. Like you don't learn this at school, you don't yep. learn much about your menstrual cycle. But now there are many well, there are many women on the internet and they're talking about this. And actually this also helped me a lot mm -hmm. to uh, yeah, to educate myself and to also try what works for me. For me, the best way is to also kind of synchronize my workouts mm -hmm. or my my work workout cycles to my menstrual cycle. Like in the beginning of my cycle, I feel more energized, I feel stronger, overall feel better. Yeah. And also my, I feel like my pain tolerance is much higher, so I can lift very heavy. Mm -hmm. And those are like the weeks when I go as heavy as I can and I really push myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it, I get closer to um, the period again, or like when I feel I have some PMS, mm -hmm. this is usually for me around like two weeks. 
and it also depends like sometimes it's stronger sometimes it's yeah. it's better not the same each month but i also take care of this so this means like i'm being a bit nicer to myself i still go to the gym usually i still work out but i do some deload sessions i just mm -hmm. don't lift as heavy as usual and i'm in general i'm trying to be a bit more yeah because also, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I, I can't take as much pain as usual. <laughs> and I think it's very important for me, at least it was very important to accept this, you know, because yeah. I used to get very frustrated about this and I'm like, ah, I'm not as strong as, uh, as usual and it's annoying. No, and you have for to me, accept this. Yeah, yeah for me, I, I find out that once I accept this, but I still go, I still try what feels nice. Like for example, sometimes in those sessions, I focus more on my form or I try new things. And this makes me less frustrated and I, I generally feel feel better. And then also this makes me work even harder in the first part of my cycle when I have more energy and my estrogen is high um, and I generally feel better. And also sometimes, of course, when, you ha when you're on your period, I mean, me personally, I like to work out. Uh, it's okay for me to do a deload session for, I think for some women, it's really uncomfortable. I think then it's, if you don't feel it, honestly, it's better to stay in bed no, sure. uh, and eat some chocolate. <laughs> uh, for me, I have this sometimes uh, in my PMS time when I feel like I really my energy is so low or I have body aching or something. I also sometimes just skip some sessions and it's fine, you know, you don't have to freak out about it. And I think this is really important to acknowledge this, like to also know, because I think like for me for a long time, I didn't really know how the yeah. menstrual cycle actually works or like what actually happens in my body and mm -hmm. the ho hormonal and that's the, change. That's the main issue here, like there's not enough studies um, showing this and the, mm -hmm. the couple of studies that I found, uh, they're showing that the performance doesn't change from your from your PMS times to after the period. Like, it doesn't make sense from a hormonal standpoint because your hormones goes up and down. But the study seems to be showing like everything is fine, and and that's the problem I see in the fitness community is that coaches now they are saying like okay, but look at the studies they they don't show any difference. So you need to train harder in your PMS time. Uh, but it it could be many reasons. And uh, from my experience, seeing women train. No, it, it can affect your training. So it's better to just chill and take a deload as you do and then go strong after these two weeks. Yeah, I think it's really important also if you look at your long-term goals. And this is also about consistency because if you, at the end of the day, I'm also doing this because it's fun. Like you should also, I mean, f women should do whatever the fuck they want, first of all. But second of all, if you want to work out and you want to have fun also and you want to feel good you need to find a way that is possible for you to do it uh, consistently yeah. consistently right and if you feel like if you're torturing yourself during your pms time or during your period i think you're very likely to not go again or like yeah, you, exactly. you will not have mm -hmm. a lot of fun and at some t and at some point maybe you stop going to the gym so i think it's better to to have some weeks where when you're a bit nicer to yourself and do some deload and then train even harder when you feel better or when you feel energized. It's always about the bigger picture. Like even if you miss a week, what is a week compared to the whole year? Like at the end of the day, if you go for a year and you miss a week, it's nothing. And at the same time, the, the recovery time is so important as well. It is. Yeah. So sometimes I can also feel this like when I had one deload week and then I'm, I'm coming back <laughs> and I feel more energized. Um, it's also a huge difference and this is also how you can progress at the end of the day.